Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going through exercise 1.42 where we'll design a bandpass filter. By the end of this video you'll have a solid understanding of how to create a filter that allows a specific range of frequencies to pass through while attenuating frequencies outside of that range. Exercise 1.42 is asking us to design a bandpass RC filter as shown in figure 1.137 so a bandpass filter has two cutoff frequencies, you can see. So anything in between those two cutoff frequencies is called the pass band, and anything outside of that is the stop band. The question is asking us to choose impedances so that the first stage isn't affected by the second stage. Information on load impedance or source impedance is not provided. So first of all, let's define some filter characteristics. So obviously we know this is a bandpass filter, and it's going to be a combination of high pass and low pass RC filters as the question itself is asking us to design a RC filter. So first of all, what is a bandpass filter? So a bandpass filter is a circuit that passes frequencies within a certain range and attenuates frequencies outside of that range. So on the figure you can see this range over here which is the pass band and then anything outside of that range, so from omega 1 to naught and from omega 2 to all the way up to infinity basically will attenuate those frequencies. So this is useful in things like audio applications and communications where you want to isolate a specific band of frequencies. The key characteristics of a bandpass filter are defined by these two cutoff points over here or the cutoff frequency points and they define the lower and the upper bounds for the bandpass filter. Omega 1 over here is the lower cutoff frequency. Any signal below this frequency will get attenuated. And the second cutoff frequency is Omega 2. And anything above this point will get attenuated as well. Alright, so let's move on to the first step for designing this bandpass filter. So what we will do is split the bandpass filter into two segments. The segment 1 will be a high pass filter and the other segment will be a low pass filter and each segment will focus on one of the cutoff frequencies. Before we can do that, let's define some filter parameters that we can use for actual calculation and then doing a simulation at the end. This is not required for the question, but I think it provides a better understanding of how this filter works. Say that we are designing this filter for audio signal applications and we want to have a passband between 85 Hz and 8000 Hz. So that's the typical audio vocal range. And as an assumption, let's assume that our signal source has a very low impedance and our load is very high impedance, so we can ignore them for the calculations. So let's design stage one, which is the high pass filter. And over here, you can see on the circuit diagram, I've got some source with a very low impedance. And then I've got a high pass filter stage over here, which has a capacitor in series with a parallel resistor. So firstly, let's define the worst case impedance of this filter. And if you remember one of my previous exercises, exercise 1.23, the worst case of our RC filter is the resistive component in the filter itself. So in this case, that would be R3. So what we need to do is define the value of that resist so that it is at least 10 times larger than our source impedance. Obviously the source impedance is negligible in this case. So I'm going to set the value as 1K as a starting point. Having a higher value resistor will obviously mean that you load the source less and that you're wasting less power. But then this will also affect the next stage. So you want to maintain as low impedance as possible so that you're not affecting the next stage of this filter. So we know our cutoff frequency is 85 Hz as we've defined it ourselves. And the cutoff frequency can be calculated with the equation that's on the screen now, which is 1 over 2 pi RC. Now if you rearrange this equation to get C by itself, we get the capacitance is equal to 1 over 2 pi R F C. Obviously R and F C are known because we defined R as 1 kilo ohm and F C as 85 hertz, which gives us a capacitance value of 1.872 microfarads. Obviously this capacitance is not available in the real world. I mean we can make it with a combination of capacitors. So for this filter, what we will do is set the capacitance to the closest value that we can find, which in this case is 2.2 microfarads. And then we will recalculate R to get the cutoff frequency that we want. 
So again, we are rearranging this equation and setting the capacitance as 2.2 microfarads. So R is now equal to 1 over 2 pi, 2.2 microfarads times the cutoff frequency, which is 85 hertz. And that gives us a resistive value of 851 ohms. So now both of these components have been defined. But what we need to do is find the closest value we can find for the 851 ohms resistor as this resistor may not be available in real world. So choosing the closest possible values for the resistor, we get an R of 845 ohms and a C of 2.2 microfarads. At this stage, we can recalculate the cutoff frequency. So obviously we have our equation that is on the screen, basically FC equals 1 over 2 pi RC. And if you put down 845 in there and 2.2 microfarads, we get a cutoff frequency of 85.6 hertz. Obviously, you need to decide for the application if that is suitable. But I mean, that's fairly close to what we wanted. So I will continue with these values for our first stage, which is the high pass filter. So the first stage is complete and we can populate these component values. We've got 2.2 microfarad capacitor with a resistor of 845 ohms. And that gives us a cutoff frequency of 85.6 hertz. Now let's move on to the second stage which is the low pass filter segment. So what this filter segment will do is attenuate any frequencies above our FC2, which was the second cutoff frequency. So we know our impedance or the worst case impedance from our first stage is one kilo ohm. So we want the resistor value in this case to be at least 10 times the value of the resistor in the first stage. So we had a resistor of 845 ohms so in this stage, we'll define the resistor as 10,000 ohms as a starting point. So going through the same calculations again and plugging in these numbers, obviously we start off with the resistor value as 10 kilo ohms and we've got a cutoff frequency of 8,000 hertz in this case. And that gives us a capacitance value of 1.989 nanofarads. So the closest value capacitor for this value capacitor is 2.2 nanofarads. So we can plug in this number afterwards and recalculate the resistance R. And doing that gives us a resistor of 9043 ohms. Obviously we want to find the closest resistor value that's available in the real world. And that gives us a resistor value of 9090 ohms and a capacitance of 2.2 nanofarads. Now if I plug those numbers in, we get a cutoff frequency of 7.958 kilohertz, which is obviously a little bit away from eight kilohertz target that we had, but it's nothing significant. So I'm going to stick with the values that we have here, but we can fine tune it if you wanted to bring this closer by adjusting the value of these components over here. So our total filter segment or the total bandfast filter will look like this. So on the left hand side, we have a a source with a very low impedance or output impedance of that source and then on the right hand side we have a load which again is not defined in the question so I've set as a very high value as well and then our stage one is a high pass filter and stage two is a low pass filter with the component values that we calculated in the slides previously and obviously to create a band pass filter we have combined them two together so if you can imagine a signal coming through here so if any frequency below 85 hertz is coming through it will get attenuated by this stage and it'll be relatively unchanged as it gets to this stage over here and then this stage will cut off any frequencies above 8000 hertz so what the load sees is basically frequencies between 85 hertz and 8000 hertz so there you have it, our bandpass filter designed for frequencies of 85 Hertz to 8000 Hertz. Now, if you were to run a simulation on this, I can show you basically the cutoff frequency at the 85 Hertz point. So you've got roughly the 3 dB point cursor over here. And this is basically the FC1. Because showing both FCs in the same graph is a little bit difficult. We can see we got 3 dBs at 85 Hertz roughly or 85.85 Hertz. Obviously the calculation showed 85.6 Hertz, but then we are loading this filter. So there'll be a small effect from that as well. 
And another loading effect you can see, the passband doesn't go completely to 0 dB, so there is some attenuation in the passband as well. And again, this is from the loading effects. Now looking at the second segment, or the low pass filter, the 3 dB point is at 7.92 kHz. Obviously I was calculation showed something similar i think it was 7.95 but again there's loading effects and things like that but we got roughly what we wanted from this filter and you can see that it is producing what we wanted so we've got our 3 db points at the fc1 of 85 hertz and fc2 of 8 kilohertz so if you found this solution helpful please give a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more electronics videos i've got a playlist on art of electronics and other hardware design as well if you have any feedback for me on the solution for this question, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you really enjoyed this video, consider sending a super thanks, so that would be much appreciated. Bye for now.